Here are 5 beginner tips for 3D kit bashing in Blender. Recently, a guy named Joshua came to me with questions on how to 3D kit bash something. This was the end result. It got me thinking, if you were just starting your 3D kit bashing journey, what 5 tips would I give? 1. Setting the origin of your object. Sometimes you'll import an object and it'll appear miles away from the center of the project. Other times you'll be rotating and scaling and the object doesn't act the way you expect. Setting the origin of the object corrects those issues. With the object selected, right click, go to origin, then set geometry to origin. This will bring your object to the project's origin. Now it should rotate and scale the way you expect. If you've moved your object into place and you want your object to stay in place and not snap to the origin, select Set Origin to Geometry. This will bring the origin to the center of the object. Sometimes, when posing arms, you'd like the arm to rotate around the shoulder. To set a custom origin, select the object, go into Edit Mode, and with everything selected, use the Move tool to move everything around the origin. The little orange dot is the origin. Make sure to use the little compass widget on the top right to snap your view so you can line up things easier. Now your object should rotate around the shoulder. Boolean differences. There are different ways to cut objects in Blender. But this is the method I find the easiest. First, bring in a mesh by pressing Shift plus A, and then selecting the object you think would be the most useful to cut with. In most cases, I use a cube, useful for making big cutouts with straight edges. Then, move, scale, and rotate the object to where you want to make the cut. Select the object you want to cut into, go to Object Modifiers, and select Boolean. Then, using the eyedropper tool, select the object you want to cut with, then press Apply to delete the shape. People also ask how to make a clean cut separating an object using either a straight line or a curved one. Boolean differences are great for that too. It's useful for separating an object when you want to keep both parts instead of deleting one. You select a plane instead of a shape. Then, with the plane selected, go into Edit Mode and turn on X-Ray Mode. Then, select an edge, and then press E to extrude new vertices. At that point, you can make a straight cut, or if you want to make a curved cut, then you can select the corner and use the bevel tool to add a curve. Make the curve smoother by increasing the segment value found in a pop-up menu that appears in the bottom left to increase the amount of segments which smooths the curve out. Instead of a big curve, you could also create a custom shape by continuing to extrude vertices until you're happy with the shape. Then, in object mode, add a solidifier modifier to the plane and give it some thickness. Then, as before, add a boolean modifier to the object you want to cut, and then select the plane. Now you have a cut in your object. You'll notice that even though we've made a cut in the object, it's technically still one object. This leads perfectly into the next tip, separating by loose parts. With your object selected, go into edit mode, press P, and then select separate by loose parts. Now any object that isn't connected to another object will be separated. Sometimes, before I do all the cutting with boolean differences, I'll check to see if an object can already be separated into loose parts. Sometimes they can, and it really makes life easy. Here's a real world example of that. This shotgun was able to be separated, but this plasma pistol wasn't. So if I were to combine them, I'm simply able to delete the parts of the shotgun after separating by loose parts, 
but I'd need to use Boolean differences on the plasma gun. If you want to group them together, select all the objects, right click, and then press join. Elastic Deform Tool I typically like combining objects and printing them as one piece, instead of printing arms and bodies separate and gluing them after. Sometimes objects won't line up perfectly and will create little gaps. These can be hard to support and just don't look very great. I like to stretch and pull objects into each other to hide these gaps. Select one object, go into sculpting mode, and then select the elastic deform tool. Then pull one object into place. Try to select a big flat surface if possible. You don't want to create little pockets where resin can get stuck post curing. Everything should be solidly clipped through each other. Just make sure to print at 100% infill later on. You can stretch things to make them look more natural and seamless. You can also hide objects by pushing them out of sight. Hiding objects. Something I didn't figure out until way too late is how to hide objects in your viewport. A lot of the times when you're doing this style of kit bashing, your screen can get cluttered to the point where it's hard to see and select what you're working on. To fix this, select everything you want to be visible, and then press Shift plus H to hide everything not selected. To bring back the hidden objects, press Alt plus H. And there you have it. That's pretty much everything you'll need to get started with 3D kit bashing. If you have any questions or better ways to do things, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe. Check out my Buy Me A Coffee if you're willing to support the cause and get your name on a wall in graffiti. Leave a comment down below with any feedback or suggestions. Alright, bye bye